I made it. I am here in Eastern Province in Saudi Arabia. I am in the seaside town of Al Khobar along the Corniche. And this gigantic Saudi flag hanging up behind me is proof <laughs> that it is possible to come to Saudi Arabia as a tourist. And even for somebody like myself, um, you know, I didn't know uh, quite how this was going to work. I hadn't really read about anybody that had crossed the Kuwaiti-Saudi border, at least not uh, Westerners or native English speakers. I am skating in Saudi Arabia. This is really abstract. <laughs> I am going to try and do something that is relatively new to Saudi Arabia, which is I am going to go to a movie theater and see if I can see John Wick 4, which premiered today, I believe. And uh, yeah, this should be interesting if I find the place. Movie theaters, I think, were closed by a fatwa by the ulema, who are the ruling uh, religious clerics of Saudi Arabia in I think it was 1980. So the theaters have been shuttered for a very long time. And apparently now movies here in Saudi Arabia are back in a big way and the theaters are state of the art. So see this, the theater is somewhere, according to someone I just spoke to, they're somewhere along the corniche here. So hopefully I'll find that soon. Somewhat like Iraq, albeit in a much different manner and for much different reasons. There is kind of a similar vibe that Saudi is opening up and though not rebuilding, it's modernizing. And you can kind of feel the energy here that, that this is taking place. Um, it, it just feels like a really interesting time to be here in the kingdom. One thing I would note, just uh, one little detail, is that there is a degree of public art here um, that I've noticed so far but none of it details the human form, which is probably owing to modern Saudi Arabia's conservative Wahhabi roots. So unlike, I, I didn't notice for that matter, um, any, anything in Kuwait City either that represented, um, but you know, busts or statues of, of men, and certainly not of women. Um, so the country is modernizing, but it's also, it's sticking to its um, its norms in certain very low key ways. Two other things I would note is that it is really challenging to cross the roads here, partly because they are so incredibly wide in some places, and there aren't crosswalks or uh, or stoplights at many of them. And then the other thing is that it's really hard to navigate this place without a SIM card, uh, something I have not done because where my hotel is located, there aren't any shops, so there's nowhere to buy anything like, say, a SIM card. So in order for me to call a Kareem taxi or a Bolt taxi, I have to leech off the Wi-Fi of a Starbucks or something. <laughs> so it is, I mean, I'm riding my skateboard here around Al Khobar, but man, this town is a lot bigger than I had, I had anticipated. I think I, I just was so focused on the border issues that I didn't research um, nearly as much as I should have about the actual logistics of, of getting around. It feels like there are honestly a, a million people out tonight. And I don't mean that in the expression a million, I mean, it seems like there are an actual million people along the Corniche of Al Khobar celebrating Eid al Fitr. And the bulk of people, besides the Saudis, seem to be 
I would say Bangladeshis and then uh, Pakistanis and like a mirage off in the distance I see the logo for an AMC multiplex kind of excited right now oh here it is a Saudi movie theater just just smelling the popcorn has me fired up and I love that I rode my skateboard here on top of that they have a do-it-yourself icy machine here and you can mix and match I'm gonna put some banana in mine Wow, this looks good. Part of why I'm so excited about this is because the last movie that I saw um, on a trip like this was John Wick 3, and now I'm seeing John Wick 4, so it feels like life really is getting back to normal, at least for me, as much as I can make it. That was bordering on the surreal to see a movie in Saudi Arabia and in a movie theater way nicer than any probably AMC in New York City. At least everything is way newer and all the the, the, um, the technology is all much newer. Maybe this is why AMC had their their uh, stock skyrocket a couple of years ago during the pandemic. I don't know. What's interesting is like come out of the theater and then everyone is in, you know, the so many of the women are in niqabs and abayas and the men are in dobs and dizdashas and butras. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's really interesting. I realized, I'll tell you one funny thing is, I was the only one that actually went to use the urinal because all the other men were in dishdashas coming out of the theater. So there's all these just little funny cultural nuances that I'm noticing here. I mean, it's not that I haven't been around um, this before, but not on this scale. I think the UAE isn't quite on that same scale. I think a lot more people in the UAE um, are donning Western dress than here in Saudi. But uh, yeah, the John Wick was an absolute blockbuster. It was a real rock'em sock'em number. And they give you a poster on the way out. And I took one just to have as a memento that I saw a movie here in Saudi Arabia. Riding on a rather rustic bike track along the Corniche. It's lumpy. The ground's kind of smooth. So all night as I've been skating around El Khavar, I've been getting that feeling that so many of the people that I pass by have never seen somebody ride a skateboard before, that this, what I'm doing is completely alien to the society, both the people who are from here and the, uh, the male migrant workers who are strolling over along during the Eid celebrations tonight. And I haven't felt this in so long because, you know, with globalization and how big skateboarding has become around the world. You know, this is something I used to feel in the 90s when I would go skating in, you know, Turkey or Egypt or someplace, you know, way back in the day. That was before professional skateboarders began, you know, touring all over the place. When skateboarding was just confined to, you know, North America, Western Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and Japan, basically. Um, maybe, and uh, Brazil. Um, I'm trying to think whom, whom I'm leaving out. I don't want to offend anybody. But here, I just notice the way that people look at me. It's like something they've never seen before. I am here in Al Khobar, and I am waiting for a Kareem taxi to Damam, which is the twin city. Uh, to get some food and to get my head straight and then figure out how to get out of here um, I'm finding Saudi Arabia so far extremely difficult to travel Because I'm here during Eid so all of the trains and all of the buses at least according to the websites are sold out And I'm also not sure how to get like an intercity service taxi and I'm trying to see if I can go to Riyadh the capital and um, so I'm gonna get a Kareem and I'm gonna ask the driver where to go or ask the guys at the uh, South Indian restaurant that I'm attempting to go to and uh, hopefully I'll figure this out otherwise <laughs> I'm stuck here and uh, it's also extremely expensive here because the hotels skyrocketed for the Eid holiday so when I was leaving Kuwait the prices that I saw 
uh, were no longer relevant. The, pri the, the room prices on say, Expedia and Booking went out the window as soon as um, the Eid al-Fitr holiday was declared over in Mecca in Western Saudi Arabia. So it's definitely been a very lonely, frustrating few days here. And uh, um, let me see if I can turn it around. So far in my travels to uh, Damam and Al Khobar, the best option food wise, as far as like wholesome food, is Indian food. Um, because otherwise everything is a chain. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of um, using Indian food as my touchstone to get stuff that's, that's more on the wholesome side and less that's loaded with fats and preservatives and whatnot. And it's also way cheaper to eat at Indian restaurants where Indian migrant families are eating. So coming up here, there is a really cool art wall with all of the GCC leaders. And you've got Oman, you've got Bahrain, Saudi, Kuwait, you've got all of them. Okay, so Ahmed and I are at the Saudi Arabian Railway Station here in Dammam Industrial Area near this is by the near the first hotel where I was staying and Ahmed is thinking maybe I could get a standing room ticket or a last minute <laughs> ticket <laughs> so I don't know what the deal is going to be the the app says it's not possible to buy a ticket but Ahmed thinks it is inshallah so um yeah we'll see we're here in a in a queue of a lot of cars this to say the architecture of the station looks really cool Okay, so we are kind of scurrying into the terminal to see if it is possible. Just explore the idea of, of getting a train ticket to Riyadh. Okay, we're going to give this a try. Okay, so Ahmed is working out the logistics for the train ticket to Riyadh, and apparently we can buy it uh, in about an hour and 15 minutes or so. Yeah. So we're gonna go back in. I guess the guy, they were speaking in Arabic, and he told Ahmed and I to come back. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Hopefully, inshallah, this will work. Okay, so we, we've, we've got all the logistics worked out, and <laughs> That's okay, Auntie. <laughs> Some Indian lady just almost got yeah. in, Ahmed, in Ahmed's car. She thought he was an Uber or another or another car ring. <laughs> oh, that was funny. That was funny. <laughs> okay, alhamdulillah. Okay, well, thanks to my friend Ahmed, who drove me around today, who I met through Kareem. I am boarding the train to Riyadh, which is one of the things I wanted to do in Saudi Arabia was ride one of its train lines and Ahmed made that happen and to him I'm very, very thankful. Pretty excited about this actually. This is so much better than taking a bus or an intercity service taxi. Saudi Arabia to another is something previously I'd only imagined. I never thought this would actually be a reality. Um, so I'm just kind of taking that in. And again, I want to thank my friend Ahmed from Kareem in Al Khobar wa Damam who helped me so much today. Shukran Jazilan Ahmed. Belafia. <laughs> 